You're watching Moms Matter at Focus TV Network, and I'm Sharini Adegar, your host. Today, we have a very important topic, the path to college, and how are we going to assure that our kids get in where they want to get in? We have a very special guest, Janice Adams, founder of Academic Achievers, who has been an educator for over 20 years and has three kids, all three, who were accepted to Ivy League schools. Welcome, Janice. Thank you. I mean, this is tremendous. Three kids all accepted to mm -hmm. Ivy League mm -hmm. schools. And two chose Harvard. <laughs> so there. Wow. Two chose Harvard. Yes. I mean, what was your magic recipe? What, what's the secret? I started thinking about that. And some of the things I did just unknowingly, and some of them, I guess, I did in, on purpose. And I thought, well, what is the secret sauce here? And there is some things you can do. There's never a guarantee. You know, every child is different. But there are some things you can do to increase their chances of getting to where they want to go. Okay, let so, us know, let us know. Okay. Um, first off, you know, all schools are going to have their own um, set of, of demands. But basically, they bo boil down to three things. Grades, scores, and accomplishments. Now, the better the school you want to go to, the higher selective school, is going to what the top grades, the top scores, and the top accomplishments. Now those now, top I, grades though, that what's scary to me now yes. with four children, those top grades, well, you used to be able to have a 3.8 and go to Berkeley. Now a 4.5 is like the norm with these kids at these private schools. Which is exactly why the scores matter and the accomplishments matter. That's the thing that people don't realize. They don't want mediocre. They want someone that's going to bring a world-class uh, part to their community. And that doesn't start in your junior year. That starts in your fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. That's when you start stacking up who, who are you and what can you bring to us. Right, right, right. So I looked back and I thought, okay, now if you're starting there, where does the whole thing start? And then actually I looked back and it says, you know, there's nurture and there's nature. And the the scale is tipping heavily toward um, nurture, experiential. And so what we're looking at now is that a two-year-old can learn three languages, no problem. Correct. The neurons and the connectivity and the pathways are all forming between one and five. And many times that's squandered. And it's, again, if you don't use it, you will lose it. Right, absolutely. So we can, uh, we can have things coming into our child's life that they didn't even know existed. They may or they may not take to it, but they have the opportunity, the choices. Right. So when you're looking at that, you're saying, hmm, what can I expose them to they might like? Right. So you, you give them more and more stimulation. Some things they'll take to, some things they won't. So you just let it go by the wayside. Right. So you're saying start younger and younger. encourage them to do things that they're passionate about. Yes. So yes. on a college application yes. in 11th grade, it's not like, oh, all of a sudden I've decided that I'm going to spend my time feeding the homeless. Well, exactly. Right. A hundred applications say that. Sure. Did you start a community service project in the eighth grade that built to something important? Right. Did you compete on a national level in anything that you started when you were fifth grade that you got better and better and better at? Right. So that's what they want. They just don't want another mediocre contender. Sure. And that's sure. because they're, they're alumni. They want to look back and say, they, they came from our school. Right. And they're proud. Right. And then what are the chances now when you have mediocre scores mm -hmm. and mediocre grades, but you've just had some great accomplishments doing great things? I mean, do you really have a chance? That these top trumps, tell you the truth, that will trump. Really? Really? Mm -hmm. So we should be focusing more on nurturing our children, like you're saying, and really getting them to do great things yes. and not worry so much about pushing, pushing, pushing those yes. A's. Yes. There's too many A's. There's great inflation everywhere. It, too much prep. And, and I have a prep company. But there is, you can create great scores. But you can't create great human beings. Right. And character matters. They're looking for kindness. That's why the community service situation is huge because they want to see a child that's giving back, not because I have to fill community service hours, but because I thought this was a problem in our community and I took steps toward it and I made something to make the world better. They do take notice. Incredible. Yeah. So I'm assuming your children did all that and they had the scores and the grades. <laughs> yes, yes, maybe. <laughs> I mean, in, in my, my last child, uh, he became... Uh, 
a writer. He wanted to write. He wanted to do journalism. And he started that in third grade. He started a newspaper. By the time he got to a local private uh, high school, um, he became the editor-in-chief of the newspaper. That was the year they won the best newspaper in the country. Oh, incredible. Uh, so one thing leads to another. But sure. you've got to start early. You cannot come up with all this stuff when you're a junior in high school. No. And I think that's the key. I think yes. you answered our questions, Janice. Okay. Wow. A um, couple of other things you might yes. not have asked me, but academics, you can embed them early. You can put, the, you can put it into the play. The kindergarten the child goes to, huge. When they go to kindergarten, are they developmentally ready? It doesn't matter if they're chronologically ready. If they're developmentally ready, they will blossom. They mm -hmm. will learn to love learning. They will grab things and go with it. If they're not ready, they will be confused, frustrated, and hate learning, basically. And yes. it's an uphill battle. Right, so that's really important. Yes, and so we have to be a guide by their side. We have to let them find what passion they have Encourage it, encourage it. And if they lose, pa lose uh, interest in it, move on to the next thing. Sure, sure. And that's how you make a child uh, happy in life. Not only the best school, but the best life we can give them. And that is what counts, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Happy children. That's what we're doing this all for. Yes. Right? It's like, and I had, have to add one more thing. When my son took, uh, last son took the SAT, and he walked out and he, oh, darn, now I know which one I missed. <laughs> He missed one and knew which one it was. And I said to him, how did you do that? I mean, everyone else gets in there and tightens up and frustrated. And he said, well, Mom, I, I just acted like it was everything else we do, a game. And I figured out the ones I knew. And the ones I didn't know, I looked for the clues. And I could figure out from the clues, it's there, what the answer was. And I thought, gosh, if we all went through life like that, it's just a game. And what do we know and what can we learn? That's a great lesson in life. It I is. love that. It's a great parenting tip. Thank you so much. It was a wealth of knowledge for all of our readers and all of our watchers and viewers. So thank you so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. Um, you saw it right here, Janice Adams from Academic Achievers at Focus TV Network, sharing her tips on what's important when you are applying to these high caliber colleges. Is it your grades? Is it your scores? Or is it you and who you are as a human being? Don't miss out. Thanks for joining us.